So it seems like even before the rise of social media and, you know, advertisements having less revenue, so news media agencies also having trouble staying afloat financially, there were already challenges with, like, not being able to get information out of ministries or perhaps being censored. To give you an idea of the modern landscape, uh, so when I started as a print reporter back in 2008, uh, I like to tell students this story. Like I say, you know, you could go to an event uh, and come back and debrief your supervisor and then take your time to write it, the story for the next day. But so these days, even if you're just 15 minutes late behind the competition, right, you've probably lost the audience already. So everybody's in a hurry. It's like, push it out, push the story out, push the story out. Uh, and so everybody's in a rush now. Uh, on the financial side, Media outlets all around the world are under pressure. Many newspapers, many newspapers have shut down uh, simply because they're not making money, right? And on the other hand, also, I think all media outlets are beholden to the social media giants, right? I, mean, I think any, any reporter will tell you, like, like you know, the Facebook algorithm changes. Like for at one period, you know, it seemed to favor videos. So everybody was trying to push out videos. And then now it seems like they're favoring Facebook reels, right? Because... Uh, they're trying to uh, be like Facebook, uh, sorry, be like Instagram, be like uh, TikTok, TikTok, you know. And now the latest thing uh, I've read is that they are not actually favoring news outlets in their uh, news feed anymore, which is a very disturbing thing like, because if you don't want to be informed, uh, as we saw in the video, most people get their news online, right? And if that's not appearing in their news feed, you have to consciously make the effort to go to different news sites. CNA, Straits Times, uh, CNN, whatever, right? And I think with the short attention span today, uh, it's even harder to expect people to do that. So this is the modern day landscape for journalists, right? So typically, right, so I covered a lot of the MTF press conferences, right? Uh, so the embargo is, is at the end of the press con, right? But everybody's in a hurry to push out the story as quickly as possible especially in a period when there were these constant updates about uh, COVID restrictions, right? Uh, do you have to wear a mask? Where do you have to wear a mask? Are you allowed to get into this or that place if you're vaccinated or not? So everybody's in a hurry to push out uh, the story. So usually what we do is, uh, I think a lot of media outlets do this, they, they do what they call a fast write, right? Meaning they look for the, for the most interesting angle. For example, if uh, the MTF had said, uh, masks are no longer required outdoors, right? So that's your lead. Then you do like maybe three or four paragraphs and you push it out and you say more to come. And you update the story along the way. Now, it's not possible to do it on your own. You need a, a team around you. Uh, and there's so many aspects to it, like the headline, the story, the photo. The photo is very important, right? And then your Facebook caption, the Twitter caption, you know, it's all multifaceted. You have to think very quickly on your feet and you need help. You can't do it on your own. So that is the time pressure that journalists are under. And it's gotten... I mean, we were always under time pressure, but I think it's, it's certainly gotten worse with the digital age. Yeah, yeah. as people's uh, attention spans shorten and shorten and shorten. That's another aspect of it, uh, short attention span. Uh, you know, when I started in journalism, right, if... Uh, so Facebook started in like 2004. Uh, 2008, it was still kind of nascent. So back then, right, if you had suggested, let's do a story based on a social media post by the Prime Minister you'd probably be laughed at. Or your editor would tell you, like, what's wrong with you? Sometimes I still laugh at it. <laughs> when so when, when, you know, journalists quote what someone has said over Instagram or Facebook. But it's fast becoming, you know, legit information, right? Yeah, that's the thing. So, so uh, I, was going, I was talking about the short attention span. Yeah. Um, every outlet is guilty to some degree of chasing the clicks. And unfortunately, when you do that, it results in stories that... Uh, maybe less than substantive. Now, of course, the definition, the very important question these days is, what is news? What is newsworthy? That has definitely changed uh, in the last 10 years or so, right? So if uh, a social media post by the Prime Minister, like, I'm sure you've seen, like, so, oh, I went for Jalan Jalan with my wife. Yes. Oh, very nice, very endearing. But, you know, is that news? Right? Some outlets seem mm. to think so, right? Uh, and sometimes it's about churning out their content. Yeah. Like, my, my friend called it journalism. <laughs> right? And you see that a lot. Uh, 
it, and unfortunately, it appeals to that very short attention span. Uh. If you look at something like, like Mothership, which is a supposed social news site, right? They are very successful at pushing out very quickly, you know, like things like uh, uh, you see a social media post, you see something on Reddit, you see uh, a video circulating online. They are very successful at pushing out very quickly. Uh, unfortunately, the quality is often not quite there. Mm -hmm. And it uh, again, it caters to their very short attention span. Unfortunately, I think this sort of journalism just dumbs down the conversation. Mm -hmm. And to put it very crudely, it makes people dumber as well. Okay, when I said short attention span, I saw Carson smile, like snicker. Why are you snickering? Well, actually, uh, you, you know I do videos, right? Um, I know you do videos. Yeah, so, so you know, I, my, my videos are typically uh, four to five minutes long. And is know? that short or long for you? Well, uh, that's actually quite short, I find. Yeah, but then uh, I, I recently spoke to this guy and says, hey, nowadays uh, videos are uh, three, five minutes, nobody watch. Uh. Five minutes is a lifetime now. Yeah, yeah. we want so, 15 seconds. Precisely, <laughs> which is what, what they call reels nowadays. Yeah, you know? like it, Nick was saying. I was just wondering how, uh, how, how I can tell a story within 30 seconds. Uh, so, I think as the generations go down, right? You know, I think, yes, I... <laughs> It's a different time span for each generation. I prefer a 20-minute video. I could watch it. I'm fine with that. But it's very hard to pack you know, a news report into 15 seconds. And I've done this for, for TV when I was working for CNA. Pack it, all this information, 15 seconds. And I'm just rattling off. <laughs> and I was like, what is actually happening here? I do know a lot of people who say that uh, they get their news from Mothership. Right. Uh, and what do you think of that when they say, I get my news from Mothership? I despair. Yeah. <laughs> um, because the thing is that, I think the biggest problem now is that people aren't willing to pay for news. Okay, so let's pretend there's a, well, there actually is, right? So there's a, a, a Batomi store, is, there is Michelin star, right? And you get a lot of competitors around who think that, well, I can also make uh, Michelin star Batomi. But they do it by themselves. They're not trained. They don't know what is the right ingredients. They don't know what is the correct way to cook it. And they put out this somewhat similar kind of product, but it's just not the same. Right? But inevitably, the Michelin star store, their business suffers because there's so many more cheaper uh, alternatives out there. So my argument is that in order to call yourself a journalist, I think firstly you need to be trained in journalistic method. You need to understand things like uh, how to, what is a news lead? How do you anger a story? What is required in a story? You know, the, 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 the classic who, what, why, where, when, how, right? Uh, basic things, right? So I think if you go into that uh, attempt to report without being aware of what is journalistic method, of what is required to tell a full story, inevitably you're going to come out with a compromised product. Mm -hmm. And and the thing is that, you know, I'm sure people might say, well, you're just a snob, but you don't, what do you know? You know, uh, there's plenty of citizen journalists out there who are faster than, than the news media. But I'll, I'll give you a classic example. I mean, during the election, right? So everybody is, uh, is, is waiting for the results, right? But you might get a tweet that goes viral saying that I party X won. But then it turns out well, it's not true at all. Fake you know? news. Not, not so much fake news, it's more like misinformation, right? right? People are not fully informed. Yeah. And they put out that information. Now everybody is is so it's sort of like a democratization of journalism. Everybody uh, can just put out a tweet, an Instagram post, a Facebook post saying I saw this, that happened. Uh, this is the story, right? Unfortunately, there isn't that most important of things, verification, mm. right? Now, there are consequences for us as journalists. If I put out something that's not verified, it turns out to be false, it turns out to be defamatory, it turns out to be, to cause social tensions, right? Mm -hmm. I could get fired the next day, and rightly so, because I did not do my job. Mm. The average person can just put out a tweet uh, claiming something, it turns out to be false. Where are the consequences? When I was working at the Straits Times, right, like, 
if you got a, so sometimes you see in, I think like the second or third page, you see a column that says what it should have been, right? So if, if, uh, if there's a factual error in my story, uh, then, you know, there's a correction that says, well, actually we reported this, it should have been that. Every media outlet does that, they do corrections, all right? So back then, I don't know whether it's still the case, though. if you got more than three correct, uh, which be they call it, uh, what it should have been, uh, more than three which be in a year, your bonus will be affected. Right. Wow. So, so the point being that, uh, the point being that you have to do your very best to verify the facts and make sure there are no mistakes in your copy. Now, inevitably, because everyone is only human, there will be mistakes, yeah. But this is the incentive to make sure you get the story right. 